Hi, I'm Rhiannon Rose, and welcome back to Blog While I Game with Icewind Dale. Where I just killed a bunch of undead, and I'm looting their tombs and sarcophaguses, or sarcophagi, I guess, for treasure. I don't feel like an extra helmet's going to sell for that much, but I'll go ahead and take it. Probably more mummy's tea, but I have to identify it, don't I? Uh, oh, I have I have new spells that I can scroll. Or <laughs> new scrolls that I can scribe. <sighs> Ghoul touch, necromancy. Okay, yes, this spell is for Delia. <laughs> Um, shocking grasp. Oh, is this a cleric scroll anyway? Oh, I have two scrolls of silence. <laughs> nice. I wonder if that'll work on the imbued whites, but they always cast a magic missile as soon as they see you and it's the only one they cast, so... Maybe not as useful as it would be against a more dedicated enemy spellcaster. Um, what do I want to talk about? Um, oh gosh, not fun, but I saw a video yesterday of this Florida representative, representative something or other Barnaby um, calling trans people mutants and demons, and, like, literally comparing us to the mutants in, in the X-Men movies, which were not subtle at all about, about the fact that the mutants in those movies were, were stand-ins for oppressed minorities, fighting for their human rights. I feel like, I feel like those movies are very queer. I feel like, I feel like the mutants just are, are queer people in those movies. <clears throat> Let's see, I still picked up everything, right? Okay, one thing, there we go. Um, so I feel like it's really, um, it's, it's really, and, and someone else pointed this out, I feel like I agree with them that it's really, really poignant that <laughs> this guy has seen an X-Men movie, movie, and, and yet has not managed to grasp the fact that he's the bad guy? <sighs> and, oh my gosh, literally in those movies, um, they're likening the, the oppression towards mutants as, as being like, oh no, this is going to lead to like another Holocaust. Like what I lived through is what Magneto's thinking. And, and so he's trying to like force the politicians who are enacting genocidal legislation against mutants to, to, to live through being a mutant to see what it's like. That's that's his his whole mastermind plot, and I don't really I I was gonna say his whole evil mastermind plot, but I don't think it's that evil. <laughs> I think it's misunderstood. the The bad guys in in that movie are clearly the politicians. If you miss that, then 
something is wrong with with like whatever the the movie equivalent of your reading comprehension is i guess you would still call that reading comprehension maybe it's the same idea right but i feel like it needs a different word your your media comprehension there's something wrong with your media comprehension if you can't grasp that the politicians are the bad guys in the x-men movies <laughs> Ooh, that's a lot of magic missiles. Anyway. This happened and it made me really upset. Anytime I see I see people willing to be publicly that intensely unrepentantly transphobic and and genocidal like calling people sitting in the room, including trans kids sitting in the room, imps and demons and mutants in open session in the House of Representatives in the state of Florida. Wow. That's brazen. That's, that's just wow. Wow. And so when I see that, I get really depressed. I have severe depression to begin with. Um, and seeing intense transphobia so, so unashamedly publicly on display um, makes me feel really, really terrified. Um, that's, I mean, when you're trans and people are dehumanizing you, that's, that is a, a stage of genocide as, as like recognized in the 10 stages of genocide, which I believe was established by the Lemkin Institute which is which is named after the person who coined the term genocide um and which that that institute the lumpkin institute for um for prevention of genocide has been putting out all sorts of red flag bulletins for transphobic legislation in the uk and the united states and calling out the genocidal far-right nature of the gender-critical movement. When the Lemkin Society for the Prevention of Genocide is, is saying, hey, this is genocide, it's fucking genocide. And when politicians are, are sitting in open session calling human beings mutants and demons it is genocide that is one of the stages of genocide dehumanization it makes it easier to get to the point of extermination and we are almost there we're at stage eight out of ten there's not much further to go I get terrified thinking about that. <sighs> this made me feel suicidal yesterday. I had to call into work sick to have a mental health day because I was suicidal yesterday over this. My girlfriend had to come over and and talk me down. <laughs> and and I don't know how long she spent and it was so sweet of her and so unnecessary of her, but she spent so long just talking me down and talking me back into feeling like living again and Last night, 
I started writing a song. I guess she inspired me again. She has inspired me before to write a song, and she's inspired me again to write a song. And I, I recorded a live electric version of that song earlier today to put up on YouTube because I felt like I just needed to release it now. Like it's going to take, it's going to take time. It always takes time for me to record something like to do the drums and the bass and the guitar. It's because I'm doing every instrument by myself. Um, which I'm kind of proud of. I'm just drink the sun identify potion. I'm sure it's mummies too. Um, yes, it was mummy's tea. Thank goodness it could have been cursed. Um, so, so I, I wrote this song and I am going to start recording it. It's just, it takes me time to, to record, to record a song, to do the drums, the bass, the guitar, the vocals, everything. Oh dear. It takes a lot of work um, and a lot of time because when I'm, anytime I'm writing a song, it's like I'm learning a new song that I've just written and I'm learning how to play it on two different instruments and uh, figuring out, um, figuring out how to use a program to write a part for an instrument I don't even play. Uh, that takes time. It takes work. And I needed... I needed to, to, to just be able to have this song in a, in a format that, that I could listen to myself as soon as possible. Um, and I felt like maybe, maybe it would be helpful for other people to have that too sooner rather than later. So I went ahead and, and just sat down with my, with my, um, guitar and my microphone plugged into the computer and using my crappy built-in webcam and not this nice one because, um, because I only have two USB ports on my laptop. And I recorded, uh, I recorded a, a live electric version of that song that I wrote today, and it's it's about uh, having hope. Um, in spite of of all the transphobia that's going on, and and having hope specifically because of the fact that in states that are passing transphobic legislations and homophobic legislations, when those cases are going to court, judges are overruling them and saying this is not constitutional. And that's a reason to have hope. Uh, it's terrifying watching the legis legislations being passed and signed into law. Um, even more terrifying watching watching in some cases as governors veto these legislations and then the legislative branch overrules their veto, which I'm just, I'm sorry, but how do you even do that? I'm pretty sure that goes completely against checks and balances. That's the reason the veto exists. You, you're not supposed to be able to do that. So that's really terrifying. Um, I need something to remind me to that the sun still shines on rainy days and to have hope. Um, we spent a lot of time talking about that yesterday. She came to see me with her concern and and we spent a long time once I had come down sort of talking about literally how how the sun does shine on cloudy days because 
I sit outside to smoke my weed and I get frustrated when it's rainy and cloudy and the sun's not out and I always, 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 always <laughs> I go outside I go outside um, when I see the sun shining and always, always, always <laughs> the clouds roll in and cover it up. <laughs> and I'm like, nah, I, I'm like, I'm like a lizard. I like to bask in the sun. <sighs> and I don't like the cold. And it's fucking spring. I don't know why it's still so cold. And, and cloudy and rainy, but that's what the weather is like. And... I'm really fed up with it, and I was really fed up with it yesterday when I'm already depressed and feeling like the world is... I, I felt like the world is going to hell in a handbasket. It's going to be a genocide. I I was posting my feelings on Twitter that a lot of people would describe as being a doomer, I guess. Um, <clears throat> and I hate feeling that way. Um, I, I talked about that a bit today, and some people reminded me, hey, you don't need to shut up when you have those feelings. You're allowed to have those feelings. Um, I know I lose followers that way because I will, when I'm feeling suicidal, I will literally post exactly how I feel with no trigger warnings, and it's, uh, it's a coping mechanism, and... I'm sorry, I know it's going to trigger some people when they see it, and those are people who are people like me having the same difficulties I'm having, so I, I don't I don't want them to be triggered, so if they have to unfollow me, that's fine. Um, but at the same time, I would like to get better about it. I would like to, to spread more hope because I feel like that's more helpful. Um... I, I, so I would like to spread more hope. <laughs> and and this song is... This song is me, more than anything else, trying to give myself hope. Oh my gosh, she finally knows Magic Missile. <laughs> This song is more than anything else me trying to give myself hope. Um, but I realize other people are going to need it too. So. I went ahead, I went ahead and, uh, and recorded a version of it today, even though I, I had this, this feeling the, the other day that I, Sometimes I just feel silly writing, writing music. <laughs> like, I don't know if I write the best music in the world. And I feel like I've got to be positive in so many ways. Um, and I've just learned to be negative in so many ways my whole life. And I've got to learn to recognize that, like, you know, I wrote my girlfriend a song and she appreciated it. And... I, even myself, go back a lot of times just to listen through to my music. I go to my SoundCloud and listen to it and sing along with it, and I'm just having fun with it. Um, I don't find a lot of time to necessarily practice like I would like to, because I've got to spend all my time just with music, just recording, <laughs> just to try to get everything done that I've been writing. And I'm, I'm, I'm in, like, halfway through in several projects, and... And others that I've barely even started. And... This song is important to me, so I think I'm going to kind of give it some primary focus. Um, I feel like... I feel like in, in her and way, my girlfriend kind of inspired me a bit. But... Anyway, the the weather is the weather is is crummy and 
we were talking about how literally on on cloudy days the sun still 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 does shine um because <laughs> every now and then the sun would come back out <laughs> And I would just move to whatever to whatever part of of the deck the the sun had moved to by the time it came back out through the clouds because it was such a long time we were sitting out there in the cloudy cloudiness that waiting for the sun to come out that the sun had moved really far in the sky and I had to move to a different part of the deck to be able to sit in the sun than I was in when it was when it was shining earlier but the sun still came out. Um, and I, I really needed that. That was the, that was the first thing that, that I thought of when I was writing the lyrics. I, I thought to myself just, you know, sometimes, um, sometimes I, sometimes I do still feel like everything is going to be all right. And I, and I, I had that thought, so I wrote it down. Um, even when I see all of the transphobic hatred in the world, sometimes I do still feel like everything is going to be all right. And I feel like a lot of the reason is that when people are that blatantly hateful, it's hard to ignore. Um, someone said in response on Twitter that hatred only wins when it can hide. And they're not trying to hide. That gives me hope. And I'm still thinking like that I feel kind of silly like I, I wrote a song to try to give people hope I'm such a doomer and I wrote a song to try to give people hope. <laughs> I post on Twitter how I, how I have my fears that they're gonna they're, they're gonna kill us all in concentration camps. Um, and I wrote a song today to give myself hope and, and give other people hope. I guess it makes sense that I, that I would write a song to give myself hope, but to put it out there thinking, huh, maybe this will give other people hope when I'm such a doomer. I feel so silly, you know? But... But then I think about it, like I, I listen to the lyrics in my head and I feel like, huh, that reminds me that we do have reasons to have hope. That gives me hope. And it feels like fighting back. It feels like, like calling attention to the victories that we're having in overturning transphobic legislations. It feels like fighting back. This plaque is engraved with the face of a fierce-looking older man. The eyes seem to bore into your own as you look at it. You almost get the feeling that you are being watched. I don't know if that's the last room in this crypt or what, but I should probably rest before I try to tackle it. <clears throat> I guess maybe every musician kind of feels a little silly about their own lyrics sometimes, but... This song, even though I I feel silly being a doomer and writing it, like... 
like me trying to write a song about having hope what this is this just doesn't feel natural to me <laughs> um wow that was that was such a fight um Oh, wait, they haven't rested yet, have they? So... I guess it's okay. It's okay to feel silly. And with all the negativity that's been pounded into me all my life, um, I feel like it's natural to just feel like... feel like I, I, I wonder sometimes if I write the best lyrics or make the best music, but it's mine and it's punk and I feel like it says stuff that needs to be said right now um and in the case of my my song let's hold hands in front of the Nazis it's inspired by a gorgeous girlfriend so <laughs> and I feel like in the case of this song too because because if I hadn't spent the afternoon sitting with her pondering over over like whether whether or not things are going to get better as we wonder whether or not the sun's going to come back out from behind the clouds while I'm trying to bask in the sun and smoke my weed um was was kind of what inspired me I think it was kind of what led to that thought that I had later on that night that 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 rhymed with the thought sometimes everything's gonna be all right um sometimes even on rainy days you can still see the sunlight so I guess now I've got two songs that my gorgeous girlfriend inspired so that's cool I almost feel like, as a musician, it's... I wonder if you write your music or if your music writes itself. Because... And some people are gonna laugh so hard at that. Um, but... I, I do. I wonder if, if we write our music or if it writes itself. Um... I have had dreams where lyrics have just come to me. I just rest twice. <laughs> twice in a row. Um, I've had dreams where, where lyrics have just come to me in a dream. And I haven't finished writing anything with them yet. Um, but I feel like I will someday. And... So it makes me wonder if, if we write our music or if it writes itself. It feels like it just claws its way out of you sometimes. I guess art just, just feels that way sometimes. And writing music is especially fun when it works because things every now and then at least should rhyme, ideally. At, at least some of the time. Oh god, there's so many spectral knights in this room. I need Delia to cast a web and keep everything at bay. That's what she does a lot of the times in Pathfinder too. Ah, oh, shit, that didn't really work. I might need more strategy for this room. But so I, I started I started my day yesterday feeling absolutely dismally depressed and like there was no hope in the world for for transgender people and for queer people in general and like we're all gonna die in a genocide and I ended up today recording a song <clears throat> about being hopeful. So I feel like I might kind of be doing all right.
as far as depression goes at the moment. I think I might kind of be doing all right. I feel like feeling suicidal is just a thing that's going to happen every now and then as depressed as I am. But if I can go from there to writing a song that I'm just going to come out and say I'm actually proud of. Like... And... <clears throat> that's... The, the level of proud I was of these lyrics really as I was finishing them, I... I felt like they worked. I felt like they made me feel like uh, I can just sing this to myself all the time. I can, the chorus, I can just sing it to myself in my head all the time, anytime when I feel like there's no hope left and I can just, I can sing it in my head and I can remember that there's hope. And that's, that's what it's for. So I feel like it was a success and I feel like that makes yesterday and today sort of one good day even though it tried to start out bad as always thank you so very much for watching and until next time be yourself